Boss Bees, founder and CEO of Morality Music right here in Baltimore City. Thank you so much for joining me. No problem, man. How are you? Pretty good. Pretty good. Yourself? I'm fine. I'm fine. Speak a little bit about when you created this company. <laughs> it's crazy because everything started, every, it was just a big decision around December last year. Okay. You know, you know what I mean? At first it was just supposed to be a quick managing service company, but why not be the best? Why not go why not go for the stars? You're pretty young. How old are you? Nineteen years 19 old. Nineteen ninety seven. Okay. Yes, okay. Oh, wow, shit. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't say the year. There's no reason <laughs> to bad, say the bad, year. Bad. <laughs> Make me feel old as shit. <laughs> um, uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. You grew up here in Baltimore City? No, sir. I was uh I was born in Haiti. Oh, okay. Yeah. Moved here in two thousand five when I was around seven years old. I've been all over Maryland for real, PG County, Montgomery County, and now I go to school in Baltimore. So I'm all around for real. How well do you remember Haiti? Really well, actually. What um, was that like growing up there for the first seven years? Man, to be honest, it's it was it was it was genuine. It was just like authentic. Like the fun wasn't it was no social media at the time, no no television like that because our power kept getting cut off. So it would really be going outside, playing soccer with your dad, talking to your brother. Like at at, at night, we'd be talking to our grandmothers, like everybody sitting around the table. Everything was just so old school, you can say. Yeah. What was it that brought your family to the States? I think my dad knew he was getting sick. So he wanted to move us to America before, you know, anything, you know, you know. Cause he passed, so oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, in Haiti, but I think he, I think he really knew he was getting sick. And at first, we went for vacation, but uh, after he passed, we ended up just staying. Okay. Yeah. How uh, how was that dealing with the loss of your father at such a young age? <sighs> to be honest, man, it's 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 tough. Cause you know sometimes you just want sometimes you want somebody to tell you you're doing right. Instead of having to think, like, am I right or am I wrong? You just want somebody to just be there for you. But it is what it is. God has a plan for everything. You just move on and, and praise the Lord that you're alive. Word, word. When you first got to Maryland, where did you land? Or what, to the States, did you land in Maryland? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We moved to Maryland first. What yep. was the first place you lived out here? Uh, I lived with my cousin, PG County, Heightsville, Maryland. Okay. Right in front of PG Mall. Yeah, man. That's where I learned how to play football, everything. Okay, okay. Yeah. Did, did you did you kind of go through a process of becoming Americanized? Oh, of course, of course. Got teased in school. Uh, I'm, they used to call me all types of things. Like, I thank God I never knew what they meant. So, <laughs> the only thing that made me mad was people laughing at me, not just, not the joke. So, I'm good. I'm good. That's funny. That's funny. I, I'm curious, just in terms of sort of uh, the black experience in the United States, because obviously you're not originally from the United States, but I imagine that at this stage, having been here, it's not like you have an accent or anything yeah. like that. Do you find that like once upon a time you were like a foreigner and now people just assume you're an American? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, people, ca people can't believe I'm from Haiti. That's the crazy part. But yeah, man, when I first came here, it, the transition was hard. Like, but... I'm glad I got to see the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? I know what it's like. People talk about like ghettos in America. Like Haiti's the deepest ghetto. Third. Speak a little bit about that. You know the the experience of poverty in the two contexts. Oh yeah, it's kind of like it's kind of like the movie Belly. If, you're, if anybody ever seen Belly, there's a scene where the uh, ox took Bundy to uh, Kingston, like the the ghettos of Kingston. And like in those places, it's it's no okay. The houses are, are are a little bit separate. It's really survival. Like everything is about survival. You you have no time to think about technology, anything like that. Like even even in America today, even if you live in the hood, you still have an iPhone. You still get to see uh, stars. You still get to be on Google. You still get to see different things. And Haiti is just no. We live in day by day, and that's all it is. Yeah. What did your family do when they came to the States? How did they navigate the new environment? Man, when my mom came to America, she used to tell me, she used to sit me, my little sister, and my older brother down, and she used to always say, don't, don't, don't become an American. That's all she used to say. She worked hard. She worked, she went from working at Wendy's to uh, being a, a nurse, full-time nurse. Wow. So, you know, yeah. she always wanted us to keep that, that, that structure. That, that sense of morals. 
And how many of it were, 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 was, how many kids was it in the family? Oh, it's my older brother, two years older than me, little sister, five years younger than me. Okay, so three. Yep. Uh, and, and she three largely raised you guys on her own, right? After yep. your father's passing. Yes, sir. Let's speak a little bit about, uh, you said you, you, you started the company. How did you first start getting into hip hop? In Haiti, my dad was on, he was on the radio. He was like Martin, but he would do sports and hip hop. So I guess that's kind of where it came from. Even growing up in Little League, I'd be the first kid rapping. Like I'd make a rap for my team to get the team fired up. Like just things like that. And then I don't know. Like I, I think about the same question and it's just hip hop came to me. You know what I'm saying? With your father doing sort of like sports and hip hop and, and, and media in that way, was hip hop sort of always in your life or did you of sort of course. encountered and discovered at of one course. point? Of course, it was always in my life, always. Celebrities used to visit my house in Haiti. I've met White Clef when I was like three. Wow, yeah. 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 That's incredible. Yeah. Was, uh, was your father dealing with sort of uh, Haitian hip hop, American hip hop, international hip hop? What, what was he? Uh... Haitian hip hop. And what does that look, what what does that seem like for people who aren't too familiar with it? <laughs> man, it's cool, man. I, cultural. Everybody has a different culture. Music music travels all types of ways. Haitian music is really good. Sometimes I, I to this day I listen to Haitian music that I used to listen to when I was six years old. And is that you know like I'm from Puerto Rico and man, reggaeton nice. became the sort of interpretation of hip hop rap yeah. music that that came out of Puerto Rico and it has like a sort of distinct rhythm that is. In some ways, borrowed from reggae music. Uh, is the approach to hip hop? Does it follow the sort of sonic, uh, I guess, models that came out of the United States, or does it have like a, a distinctly Haitian uh, rhythm that underlies it? It follows. It follows some of uh, some. It it goes the way the U.S. goes. Okay. You know, there's some Haitian uh, hip hop artists who who put English in their music. Okay, yeah. okay. And do you think that is partly the influence of someone like a Wyclef, who is obviously uh, from Haiti and a huge star, but, you know, made his bones un in the American music scene? Most likely. Most likely. Because, you know, English is a universal language, and, yeah, in Haiti you were considered cool if you knew how to speak English. I see. Okay, yeah. okay. And, and does, is that something you had in your family prior to moving to the States, or did it mostly come out here? <laughs> my, mom, my mom knew we were moving. And she, she put me in this uh, English class. She wanted me to learn how to speak English, but I would always skip to go watch soccer with my dad. So I didn't really know that much English coming to America. Fair <laughs> enough, fair yeah. enough. I, you mentioned uh, your mother going from Wendy's to nursing school to becoming a nurse. And you mentioned you know uh, her raising three kids on mm -hmm. her own. Obviously, there, there's a fair amount of hustle in your background. Oh, absolutely. What drew you to entrepreneurialism? I'm, I'm a leader. I like I don't like to f follow friends. I don't like to follow girlfriends. I don't I like to follow myself. Mm -hmm. You know I like to learn and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I'm a leader, and I I, I want something for myself. Entrepreneurship is mine. Like I want to conduct on the football field. I want to be the captain. You know what I'm saying? Are you still playing football? I'm just curious. Oh, not anymore. Not anymore. Unfortunately, unfortunately. And, and you said you're studying in, in here in Baltimore? Yes, sir. Stevenson University Business Administration major. That, I, I figured you were studying something in business. Yeah. When did you first start engaging hip hop on your own, not just as sort of like part of your family dynamic? On my own, well, you know, of course, there's listening to music. And then my good friend, my good friend Toby Tevez, he was a rapper. And at first, it was like, okay, can you upload this for me? I bet I got you. So I learned how to upload music on different platforms. Uh, can you do this? Can you do that? I just learned little different things, little different things. And then just like I said, around December, I decided I know how to do all these things. Why not just make a label? Why not just go do, do something different? Was it more from the sort of management business aspect that you came to this project or more from the music side? Mm, I want to say I want to say the management. I love business. I love transactions. I just I love chess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, definitely. <laughs> So speak a little bit about morality music. Tell me where the name came from first. Okay, well, morality music, because it's one, one. Okay, morality music came, came about like, I, 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 I like living my life with structure. So that's where the, the, the morals part of it came from. You know what I'm saying? Like morality and then it had to be catchy, so morality music. As far as the label, the label itself, 
just like in the mission statement on the website, MoralityMGT.com, we're a culture-controlled product. I want to I want to reflect the African American struggle, success, and in culture. You know what I'm saying overall. Every it's it's open to everybody. Everybody can hit, listen to the music, but it's a culture-controlled product. Do you feel like you have different insights or views about what that culture is or what it looks like or what it defines it as somebody who uh, exists kind of both inside and outside of it uh, in light of your immigrant experience? You're going to have to repeat that question again. <laughs> um, do you feel like you have a different insight into what uh, African-American culture looks oh, like being um, sort of both inside yeah, and outside yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. 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 And, and, and that's where it ties into. I want the label to elevate the culture. You know what I'm saying? I come from Haiti, like, no, not even going to lie to you. In Haiti, even us as Haitians, we look down on, Ameri on black Americans. We'd be like, yo, they don't do nothing. Don't turn into one of those black Americans. Don't, don't, don't be in the streets. Don't tie yourself to the streets. So, and, you know, I still love my people. So as far as my label, I want to elevate. Mm. That's why uh, the, the, the logo is a, is a fist with the mic in it, but it still has a fist on it. Well, you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying? So I want to, that, that, that's all that's about. Do you sort of agree with that critique of in, in terms of what you've observed here in the United States? I do. I do. There are a lot of factors that play into it. There's a lot of reasons why, of course, we're in the hood, like, the, you know what I'm saying, the injustice in America. But as a people, we got to be strong. You know what I'm saying? We went from slaves to, to this. We can go from this to something else. Mm -hmm. and, and do you feel like entrepreneurship is, is in some ways that path? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I mean, in that way, uh, right, it, it, immigrants tend to have higher levels of entrepreneurship in this country, mm -hmm. uh, which is odd considering it's like a capitalist context. <laughs> you would think like we'd raise local capitalists. But uh, oftentimes, you know, uh, immigrants have been sort of the lifeblood of our economy in a lot of ways. You know, they start businesses at higher rates than, than native born people. What do you what to your mind are the things that help elevate? the black communities that exist today, especially in spaces like Baltimore? Well, for example, the, the music coming out today, right? There's a lot of club music coming out. That's kind of the trend nowadays, mm. club music. But you have nothing, and I don't have any problem with that. I never want to sound like a hater. Like, of course, I listen to all types of the, uh, uh, music like that. But where where is the Nas? If, if people listen to Nas, Nas will teach you a book. You listen to Jay-Z, like, there's a book behind it. It's like, wow, like, this is really the life I'm living. DMX, Jada Kiss, like, I want people to think. Like, this is morality. I want you to get your morals straight. I understand we want to party. I understand this and that. But you got to have some type of music to make you think. Mm -hmm. So that's what, that's what that's about. Are a lot of your influences in that sort of East Coast, especially New York, mid-90s to late-90s sort <laughs> yeah, of yeah, a period? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I noticed that, too. I noticed that, too. Like... I really like the I really like East Coast music. West Coast is nice, but it doesn't really touch my soul. Like East Coast is like, wow, like rhythm. I I love it. What were other than Jay Z and Nas? Did you have other guys that you really uh, gravitated towards? Uh, not as not in the hip hop industry. For example, I love Dame Dash. Okay. Yeah. You okay. Know, interesting. Uh, I love P Diddy. So do you study kind of like the moguls, the business minds of the... Uh... Yeah, of course, of course. Let me ask you this question because I think uh, you might have an interesting take on it. Do you think of Jay-Z at this stage more as a business success or a hip-hop success? Both. He's the franchise and the franchisee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Everything he does he, is smart. For example, one thing he did with Tidal when he opened up Tidal, right? He took all his music down. He took he took him he took it away from uh, Apple Music, whatever Spotify. And he put it on Title. That means you're gonna you're gonna have to listen to Jay Z. So you're gonna automatically go purchase Title. Like everything he does, like he he ties his music with his business. When the four 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 album that just dropped, he dropped it on Title a week early. I'm mad. I can't even listen. I know. To I'm it. pissed about that. That's too. what I'm saying. Fuck your that man is that man is is <laughs> he's finessing both ways. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah. And so let me ask you, you know, from your perspective as an entrepreneur, because definitely in today's landscape, I think one of the challenges is controlling the ways people access your content, right? Because mm -hmm. you put shit on YouTube or you, you know, you use social media 
and it's free for anybody who wants it, which mm -hmm. is, uh, I mean, it can help on the publicity side, but it hurts on the revenue side because, Absolutely. right, like they're, yeah. they're, go they're essentially supporting Twitter and Facebook and SoundCloud and these other uh, companies, but you're the one creating the content for them, right? Yep. And so like, you're essentially doing the work uh, and they're making the money. You know, wh what are your strategies for kind of controlling the access to what you guys do at Morality Management to make sure that uh, you guys are the ones profiting from it first and foremost. You know, before I even answer this question, I'm new to the game, so yeah, I'm, no, this, I, this, is, this I'm, is just an idea. I'm hoping that, you've got some thoughts. Yeah, I yeah, absolutely. Thought of, this the, is it's the same problem in media. You know, we yep, have to share all our yep. links on stuff that this don't make is, us any money. This is kind of uh, you can call it faith that hasn't been tested. But back in the day. You used to sell records. It was selling to people, 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 people. Now, sell to, sell to companies. Sell them to titles. You know what I'm saying? Sell them to that. It's, of course, everybody's going to get their hands on it, like maybe if they, maybe without even paying, but I already sold it to title. Title paid me this much amount. And as much people, I mean, as many clicks that people, people, you know what I'm saying? People download it on title, I get a piece of that revenue because I sold you my work to put on your platform. Definitely. Now, let me, I'm, I'm just curious, you know, you mentioned, uh, you know, sort of faith untested. Mm -hmm. uh, is, is there a sort of uh, religious or theological background that informs some of the mission of, of what you're doing with the company? My mission with the company has nothing to do religiously. What I, my, my, my purpose in life, yes, you know what I'm saying, of course, but no, nah, not with the company. Not with the company so mm -hmm. much. And then in terms of the company, is, it, is the focus on sort of producing artists you know that are on the slate or do you also manage folks you know wh wh what are some of the different things you do with the company nah right. with the company I have my main artist and the main focus of the company is getting him to to the stars so it might affect to a different galaxy you know what I'm saying I want to be the best I want my artist to be the best like that is the main goal as of right now once we get once more revenue starts coming in then you know we'll look into other artists and stuff like that but as for right now the early stages we just trying to we just trying to elevate and how do you what, what is your sort of assessment of the local market uh, are you focused on the local market are you like eh, you know I'm, I'm gonna push these guys in bigger spaces what what what, what are your thoughts on that because it's not always that easy in Baltimore I find for you know artists in general yeah 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 but one we live uh, in so around Silver Spring oh, okay area. yeah like way way down there and two yeah I, I do believe the local market the local demographic is very key because you have to have your own you have to have your buzz you have to control your area in order to ele elevate other places because somebody else from this other this other state hears you gonna be like, who is this guy you know what i'm saying you got to have definitely. the local demographic is very important and how connected are you guys to to dc and the scene down there pretty getting there getting there well yeah, known yeah. getting there you know what i'm saying what is your sense of the scene i don't have a good uh you know, I know there's some guys that have come out of it, like Wale is obviously like the yeah. big uh, example. But I mean, I lived in D.C. a few years. I wasn't doing this kind of work when I was there. But other than Wale, I never got the sense of like it's got a huge presence or maybe yeah. just in certain locations. That's because one, I'm going to say this right now. And uh, me and my artist, Naz B, we talk about this a lot. Maryland is on the rise. The same way Atlanta started getting artist after artist, Chicago artist after artist, Maryland is on the rise. Like we're we're about to catch this 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 wave. So the scene going on there is is getting is is very good. The only thing, the only problem, the only problem I have with Maryland is the fact it's not it's not a lot of unity. You get what I'm saying? Everybody plays for keeps. There's nothing wrong with that at the end of the day because you gotta look out for yourself. But like you can even hear other Atlanta rappers talk about how they, how they got successful. Oh, I was in the studio with this guy, and then the DJ reached out to this person for me. Thank you to him. In Maryland, you'll never really get that. It's like you got to do everything by yourself. Move how you move. Show love, and it it, it it even feels like it's impossible to show love sometimes. But. It is what it is. Yeah, let me just ask one last question on that because, you know, obviously here in Baltimore, we, you know, we keep having practically record-breaking years mm -hmm. in terms of our murder rates. Uh, and there is this sort of feeling like, uh, yeah, you can't love one another. It's just not allowed. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and obviously, like you said, a, a big part of the mission of your company is to elevate mm -hmm. the culture. You know, how, 
how do we break down those walls, even just starting within, you know, the music industry among the artists? You know, how do we get this space to stop being, I mean, literally cutthroat uh, and more like an Atlanta that's supportive? Uh, because, you know, I think Atlanta's success really has rested on that uh, internal support. Exactly. It's not a huge place. Exactly. It doesn't have the advantages that New York and L.A. have. You don't have the, or you, you used to not have the same media infrastructure. Yeah. But it's clearly in hip hop. It is on top right now. Uh, so how do we get you know the, the the local sort of habits here in Maryland more aligned to, to that sort of thinking? Lead by example. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a dark community. So when once you make it, shine some light on your community. You know what I'm saying? Like bring awareness to these problems. If you if you want people to start worrying about the kids, all right, man, go do some after school pro programs for the kids. You know what I'm saying? Like. It, it's 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 a really crazy world, <laughs> I tell you that. Definitely. But yeah, just shine some light, man. Shine some light in the dark area. That's all. That's all that is to it. And, and last but not least, the same thing I said earlier: music that makes you think. Undeniable, thinking music. Like I want, I want to have the nicest beats because that's what everybody loves nowadays. I want to have the nicest beats with the, excuse my language, really, really, really shit. That's Definitely. what I want. Yeah. Like that's what I want. So, so you have to think. You have to sit back and be like, "Damn, yo, this is exactly what's going on in the world," you know. And yeah, that that that's that. <laughs> Definitely. I mean, dope beats and real shit is a good formula for hip hop. Facts. I like that. Dope beats and real shit. I got that. So, Boss Bees, founder and CEO of Morality Music. Thank you so much for yes, taking sir. the time for the interview today. No problem. Thank you for the opportunity.